Welcome back to the 458 Speciali. And as <laughs> it is absolutely magnificent as it is to be in this car today with this weather. As you can tell by the thumbnail and the title, today is not about the Ferrari. Today is about the Porsche GT3. And if you've been following this journey, it's been months in the waiting. The biggest news of it all is I never expected to get a build slot on a brand new Gen 2 911 GT3. That is just never crossed my mind. The reason being the order slots and the availability for GT3s in the UK were gold dust. They were super rare and as a result there's been annoyances of people who are getting cars and then immediately flipping them for crazy premiums. However, I think I've sort of set the tone for how much I use these cars. The last GT3, I did 20,000 miles in 12 months. And we did gumball and we did road trips and we did track days and nothing got used properly. In fact, I basically daily that car. And the idea is that we're gonna do a very similar thing with the Gen 2 GT3. Now today is the day we're gonna go and take delivery of that car. I'm so excited that I've even matched my shoes to the color of my car. <laughs> I know that might come across as a little bit crazy and eccentric, but the sun is shining and the endorphins are flowing and it couldn't be a better day to go and see this phenomenal car. To go and check out the new GT3. Let's hit it! Here we are, have arrived at Porsche Center Wimslow. To try and find some parking, it's very busy because it's a bank holiday. So we're gonna have to uh, squeeze our Ferrari between all these Porsches, which <laughs> I'm not sure how these guys will feel about that, but it is what it is. So this is it, this is the space where it all started. I'm not sure if you watched the original video when I was specking the car with Anthony. We had all of these samples here on the table, trying to piece together using bits of leather and you know similar trims to try and work out how it would look. At the time, I had no idea what this car would look and feel like. It just seems like a blink of an eye that I was sat here. It was actually right at the end of last year. It was between Christmas and New Year. And to see this color here about to become manifested in a real car, I can't tell you how excited I am. Ah, oh, dude. Look at this. We're gonna have a quick look at this art. <laughs> but look at this. Massively excited. Look at the shape of it. Just quickly before we do any sort of form of unveiling. 911R, uh, apparently it's got 30 miles on the clock and it's half a million pounds. Can you check this out? <laughs> look at this price. <laughs> I mean, never did I believe I would see the day that such a, it's basically a brand new Porsche would fetch that kind of money. The world's gone mad. Incredible. They've got some serious stock in here as well. I guess with it being a bank holiday, they've got all of the nice stuff out. But anyway, this is what we're here for. Anthony, who unfortunately isn't here today, uh, me and him, I had a great time specking the car. We've been bouncing emails backwards and forwards and WhatsApps trying to finalize spec. And now it's here and it feels like a second has gone by and all I've been doing in that time is like looking at so many different pictures and specs online just making sure that I've done it right. One of the things is I guess in this day and age there's so much content of these cars that I almost feel like I know it so well despite the fact that I haven't seen my own. There's something about you knowing it's your own car. You can see people with similar specs and be like yeah, yeah you know my spec cool but when it's your own car different ball game and on this one we have some subtle maybe slightly eccentric details which some cars might not have or you might not have seen because there's one particular massively unnecessary detail which I expect on this car which I'm super excited to show you. Did you have no idea how many times I've been looking at pictures of this car, trying to picture how it'll, it'll look? 
but you know when you see it in person you're it's never just, quite ready no. for the details we're gonna walk you around and show you some of the stuff i don't know why i'm the most excited about the most um <laughs> necessary feature come and check this out this triangle here is normally just plastic to break up the big block of miami blue i spec these carbon caps on the wing mirrors and then i noticed there was an option here to have the plastic also in carbon and it just ties it in so well completely unnecessary but it's the kind of detail that i just thought that is so cool that they thought about little details like that it's Funny because on the walk-in, I saw a Cayman outside, yeah. which is in Miami Blue. Sun's shining outside. The, the way this paint changes, like outside it's super popping. In here it's got a totally different tone to it. It's so cool. So I know, obviously, when you first came in to spec the car originally, yeah. the, col the choice of colours you were so unsure about. So unsure. You know, again, obviously, with, with limited PTS, but you can yeah. get in the UK as well, it was yeah. a bit sort of, what do we go for? So there was a time when the thought had crossed my mind to play it down a little bit and go for maybe like GT Silver yeah. or even Black. But this is such a sense of occasion. Yeah, of course yeah. it is. It's amazing. Of course it is. All right, quick run around the outside because really most of the details on the inside, but it's gone for this sort of contrasting black pack theme. Black wheels, I've funnily enough yet to see that many Miami blue cars with black wheels. No, the majority I've seen have been silver. Yes. I'm not sure why. I guess one thing I would say that on the configurator, you never really know how it'll feel. But I thought if we throw enough black on the outside, yeah, with exactly, carved and things, that it would all tie in. But standing here now, loving it. So black wheels, uh, black contrasting with the carbon caps on the wing mirrors. Totally unnecessary carbon triangle, massive tick. Uh, went for the optional carbon ceramic brakes. Also, I like the way that the size of the rotors fills the wheel. Yes, they're just <laughs> huge. <laughs> also, the carbons they come with the yellow brake calipers as standard, which we'll talk about how that ties on the interior soon and to complete the whole like black pack theme we upgraded to the led headlights yes. now the significance of that is i guess the sort of backing of the lights is pure black yeah which has tied in everything so well that was an option that stood out to me most on the configurator that changed yeah. the look and feel of Definitely. the car because let's face it like lights basically make the sort of face don't they? yeah you know? exactly this whole thing changed okay moment of truth it's the first time I've sat in this car. I lived with the folding buckets for 12 months in my previous GT3, and they were so good, but also practical. As I mentioned, I did 20,000 miles in my last car. There was lots of road trips involved in that. And despite the fact that there is a huge roll cage here, and it's so good to see that again. That is such a familiar picture. I love this. Um, not only is it safer, of course, but uh, for me, great for mounting GoPros on. <laughs> but um, yeah, despite this big cage, you can fold these seats forwards and you can actually fit loads of bags in there. Um, I actually as well, potentially controversially, prefer the way that these seats fit and, and feel for me. I felt on longer journeys, the 918 style carbon backed buckets were very slightly more upright and actually they were a little bit tighter too. So I guess better for track, but these offer just a slight more like fraction of slack really. So on longer journeys, it doesn't pinch so much. So perfectly happy with these. Also embossed Porsche logo right there, which is so crisp and clean. One thing you might have noticed, yellow contrast stitching. Again, wasn't entirely sure how it would turn out, but the idea is that this complements with the yellow calipers from the carbon ceramics on the outside. Last car had, I think it was silver stitching? Yeah. I think it had silver stitching, which was nice, but it wasn't It wasn't that fun. It no, sort of all, no. felt like a more traditional Porsche, yeah. right? Uh, with this, you step inside and all of a sudden it doesn't take itself too seriously and it's like, yeah, it's sporty, it's fun. Uh, and also, something else I did differently, most people have the option to match the colour of their key with the entirety of the car. I went and matched it with the stitching <laughs> and the brakes. <laughs> Just because this is more of a smaller component, you know, it's like an accessory, it's a trim piece, and I just think it's quite cool to confuse people. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, it's good, but actually when it's inside the car, it works well, like right against the stitching here, which is sweet. So yeah, very, very cool. Once again, the uh, GT3 I had before, I didn't have the grace and fortune of being no. able to spec it. I um, unfortunately had to pay a premium for it. And as, as a result, you couldn't spec exactly what you wanted. And to have your own personal details, as small as all of these things might seem, uh, just adds up to such a special thing, you know? These outlets here where the seat belts exit from, this little shape here is normally just sort of raw 
plastic, um, but yeah, it's been clad in Alcantara and all of these things um, Yeah, made it a bit more expensive than I might have expected but, but all of these things are greater than the sum of their parts certainly and when I see this car now like my eye just keeps catching these small details which have been enhanced just a bit it's made it special man yeah it's made it special definitely. and this is crazy but the amount of people who have offered to let me have a drive of their Gen 2 GT3s and I've actively said no dude I want to hold Just off because until I drive my own car because when I drive a Gen 2 GT3 I would love for the first impression and experience for you guys to be on this channel so I am yet to even know what this thing feels like to drive which is really exciting Okay, so despite the fact that I have the keys, today I'm not actually driving off in this car, which actually hurts my soul as the way is with life right now. I'm getting on a plane tomorrow to go and test drive some new cars in Austria. More on that soon. However, the monumental occasion that is occurring and the first time we'll drive this car is actually going to be in the Scottish Highlands on the North Coast 500, which is a road that I have always wanted to drive and if I thought to myself it's like one car I can take there I'd probably take a GT3 well as the case may have it Porsche UK reached out got in touch so they're arranging an official Porsche road trip to Scotland in May would you like to come didn't take me uh, a nanosecond to say yes to that so while I'm away um, Porsche are gonna come here pick up this car and take it to Scotland so the first time we see this car dynamic will be in the Scottish Highlands and hopefully the weather will be like this. And we'll talk about then why I opted for PDK transmission as opposed to manual. Utterly blown away by it. Uh, I can't thank uh, Porsche Wimslow enough. They've absolutely nailed this. The help here has been fantastic. We've been communicating the whole way uh, and to see it here now. But after Scotland, we're bringing it back because there's a special upgrade coming, which I'll share with you soon. The smile glands are on full chat today. Right, here we are in the inner sanctum. We've had special privileges to come and film in here because normally there's some really special stuff that we can't share. This one we can share because uh, if you're in the market for a GT2 RS, this one's for sale. And I've got to tell you, I'm not sure if the camera's doing it justice. In reality, it looks phenomenal. So it's specced in crayon with lots of contrasting carbon. It just looks out of this world. A serious stance, doesn't it? It's, hey. yeah, the phenomenal. <laughs> It doesn't come through in pictures, certainly, how much these vents protrude from the bodywork, but just look at it. And all of this contrasting carbon that continues over the roof into this massive ironing board of a wing. I mean, this makes the wing on my GT3 look tiny. Yes. <laughs> look at it. It's huge. So these here, I'm gonna try and find, if anybody knows, put in the comments below, are there any decent, I guess, aftermarket options for the GT3 where I can recreate a similar carbon finish to this on the air vents of my car here? Because if I was going to do anything additional to the car, would it would be to have the intakes in carbon on the GT2. It looks phenomenal. So if anybody knows of any recommended cool optional extras that I can retrofit on the GT3 being the vents, let me know in the comments below. Okay. I mean, how amazing was that? It's just incredible. The weird thing is taking delivery of the car, but not actually driving away in it. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not exactly <laughs> a chore right now, obviously, but to drive away from something so special that I've been waiting so long for is almost painful. However, I think it's gonna be worth the wait because the next time I see that car, is going to be on some of Britain's greatest driving roads ever in the Highlands of Scotland, uh, which is where I think it kind of deserves its christening, really. Check over my shoulder there. That is another Miami Blue GT3 out in the, the sunshine. It's incredible how much that paint changes, which is really nice. I love a paint with character. The same with this car, when it's overcast or sunny, just in different times of the day, the car feels different. It's, it's great, really, really cool. So, I'm home now, it's back. 
Bank Holiday Sunday and I have this video to edit to share with you guys. This is the very beginning of the next GT3 journey. If you watch this channel regularly, certainly last year, you know there was a certain set of words that I said when the, the GT3 first appeared on the video. I can't wait to say those words to you guys again. And uh, again, as always, comments below, anything you want to know, anything you're interested in with the Gen 2 GT3, let me know. Lots more to come. As always guys, thanks for watching, and I shall see you next time. Ciao!